Okay, now, as I was saying, if you were living in an urban if you were living in an urban center like uh, like the urban city or an apartment building, you want to get out very quickly. If you are living in an apartment building, gang up with the rest of the people in your group and go out as a mob with whatever weaponry you can find, even if it's only close range and handheld. The more weaponry you have, or the more of a uh, convoy you're going out with, the better chances you have of survival. Also, if you are dealing with either zombies or, uh, again, if you're dealing with groups of people who are in guerrilla warfare you uh, and you don't know your neighbors too well, chances are you want to get out of there yourself. Remember, when you are leaving through the cities, you want to take the back streets as much as possible. You want to steer clear of large groups of people, and you want to get your way out to the power station as quickly as possible. If you are living in an urban city center, hit your convenience stores, hit your grocery stores, and everything else like that, especially the people who are living in scenario one, living out in the suburbs, when they're combing through and getting hospital supplies and the like, uh, will be able to, um, won't have to go back to try to get all these supermarkets and won't uh, be dealing with food. Remember, everybody, converge on your local power station. The more people who can be able to, uh, you know, then you can gear down and get some level of order in society here. Uh, remember, the reason for this, of course, is that, uh, again, we're assuming a post-apocalyptic world society here. So the few of you who want to do that, you want to be able to get on your local power station and gear down as much as possible, but still be able to maintain a semblance of society. The next thing that you're worrying about is, um, again, once you go back through, you want to comb uh, through your local cop shop to get whatever weaponry is left. You want to comb through your local hospital to get um, medical supplies and all that. Now, here's what, how you're going to set up your community. Um, again, this is part five. I'm trying. Okay, now hopefully uh, by now you've already been well stocked. You've got all the equipment that you need, but you probably don't know how to set yourself up. Chances are the bulk of you uh, may know enough about it. There may be a couple of, uh, of working engineers in your area, but I doubt very much that there are probably people who, if you're living in the suburbs or the urban city centers, uh, you might be living with, uh, you might be able to find someone. Now, hopefully enough of you have moved through the local area that, um, the mo hopefully enough of you who move through the local area that there's at least a wide range of people with expertise. There may be some people who already know how to equip sewers and the like. However, um, some of that expertise is no longer going to be in existence because of the fact that you can't build a, uh, a large um, sewage area or a large sewage treatment center for in the event of. However, if you are living near the open ocean, there is, uh, if you are living near a hydro plant in particular, there is a way that you can get access to, um, there is a way that you can get access to what you need. Your plan is as follows. If you are living by an open ocean, uh, this is good. If you are living near an open lake, this is very bad. Uh, let me demonstrate for you what you need to do. You need to be able to build a sewage plant. And uh, what you need to do now is that you are probably, if you are by the power plant, where you are, uh, probably it's a local hydro plant. Um, if you're on the coast, great. If you're living by a windmill set, you probably don't have a water supply. Now, the reason I suggested a power plant is because of the fact that you're going to need this for all the technology that you're going to, you know, you're still going to need a reasonable amount of technology to prolong guns and, uh, you know, and everything else to help, uh, you know, to help live and, you know, give power, lights, electricity, heating, um, cooked food, uh, medical, you know, everything else that you need for, for society and for, you know, for your conveniences of living, um, you know, and for essentials of life, you will need electricity. So here's what you do in order to be able to uh, build your, um, in order to build your society. What you need to do is now you need to go back through the city again, and you need to scrap every last bit of PVC piping you can get your hands on, every bit of duct tape, and every bit of everything else. Now I know this is going to sound really, really stupid and really, really small, and it's going to be a very, very damn slow system, but you can still build one. Find out from your local area where your nearest lake is. If this is more than 25 miles away, you are fucked. Uh, which means that uh, if that is the case, then what, I, what you need to do is you need to go find um, local maps or anything else. If the internet is still in existence by this point, which I doubt it is, go onto the internet and try to locate where, uh, where all the information about your local sewers are. If not, um, go through, uh, go back to the local city townships and the like, and try to find out, um, you know, try to find out uh, from the sewer places where the local uh, water supplies went to. Find your pipelines. This is essential. The reason I suggest this is essential is because of the fact there are probably at least a couple of toilet spots there, which eventually go back to some other sewer. You want to redirect these lines. Now remember, the power stations are probably uh, going to provide some sort of power line to a sewer. Um, you want to get those sewers up and running again, uh, which means that there, this is one of the two scenarios. You want to get those sewers up and running again, so you have to send back in and try to get, um, you know, get, at least provide enough power from your local area to divert the sewers. The problem is, for the most part, this is too impractical for where you're living. So there are a couple of options that you have available in order to be able to handle this. One of which, convert entirely to a vegetarian diet. 
you uh, build outhouses, and then you compost that poop and use that as fertilizer in another area. Unfortunately, there are a huge amount of tapeworms and, uh, and, and germs in human feces, which will eventually, um, uh, which if you put them back on your crops, uh, if you're later farming, this could become a problem. The second option is just to, um, is just to re- um, is to keep digging latrines farther and farther back out away from your land supply until each one has been filled up and you've buried it. Problem with this one is eventually you will run out of land space in your local area. The third option is to build an aqueduct. Now this of course is where the PVC piping comes in. Um, again, this is highly impractical and highly, um, you know, highly dealt with it, but it is a way to build a sewer. What you do is as follows. You dig a latrine out in the ground. You also then tie yourself to a local lake. Uh, you, you build a local lake and you build yourself a mechanical based system of aqueducts. The Romans were able to do this relatively effectively, but they had, you know, uh, 20 to 30 years and a whole bunch of slave labor to do it. You don't have that, so you're going to have to do something considerably uh, broken down, which means you need multiple layers of the, of the biggest PVC pipe you can get your hands on. What you do is you build a pump in a local area. You pump water through uh, to be able to get, uh, you know, in major quantities as much as possible out of this lake to be able to, and you do this for multiple lakes, to be able to, um, preferably one lake for your sewer, one lake for your drinking water. Um, you know, a local area for your water supply, um, if it's a spring or something like that, and uh, a farther away area for your sewer water. What you want to do is you want to build PVC pipes to connect through to your latrine. You, build, you put a pump, you pump the water through, the water goes through naturally. Here's the thing, you want to make sure the water is running constantly. Um, you cannot afford to have this water stop. This, uh, what you will do, and then you build a giant communal latrine, much like a standard toilet seat. The toilet water, uh, what happens, that the wa um, uh, here's what you do. You build the toilet directly over a stream of running water. And what you will do is uh, you take a shit in it, and uh, basically what you do is you take a shit in it, um, and then it goes through, uh, and then you either build your chemical treatment plants, so this way you can drop into the ocean, or uh, if you're working with two separate water supplies, you know, uh, which are, you know, very equidistant, you know, further distance away for your, um, you know, um, further distance away for your uh, for your uh, shitting supply, for your toilet supply, closer one for your drinking supply, and above all, do not mix the pipe uh, the piping systems for both. You want to keep two separate systems for one for the water pump, uh, local one for the uh, um, uh, for the uh, shit supply. What you want to do for the shit supply is that you build this, uh, is that you constantly have this uh, group, um, thing of water running underneath. Um, you know, you basically have a, uh, a giant, um, you know, you build it into a giant latrine, which is just like a giant um, ditch, which all runs into the local stream, which, which runs into the local um, ocean or runs away to somewhere else. Now, the thing, of course, is, is that when you do this, uh, you preferably want to build, uh, you want to do this with flushing water, so this way it will go um, away. Preferably get your, uh, and as you do this, um, you know, just build enough rushing water constantly underneath. So this way, as you take a piss or a shit into it, the um, as you drop, uh, you know, say five, ten feet down, what it will do is it will take the shit and it will actually sweep it clean, uh, you know, clean out into say a river or into something like that, which will eventually take it back out to sea. As long as it's in the ocean, you're safe. That's what you want to do for there. Now, building your machine shops and uh, other stuff like that. Again, remember, you want to use power. You want to be able to. Um, you want to be able to build uh, build enough electricity so this way you can organize your system, get electric heating, electric lighting. Um, you know, there's still plenty of other stuff that you need for society based on that. You may also want to be able to have it to power electric cars so this way you can uh, also have a fighting force. Now, by this time, um, there's a couple of other things I want to mention. If you are out by a power station, uh, as I suggested, hopefully you're out of the city in an area which is you know uh, near a coal power plant, a windmill power plant, or preferably a hydro plant. Hydro plants are some of the best because, of course, you're close to a water supply. See latrine for details. The next thing that you want to work with is um, an organizational system. Uh, the other thing you're also wanting to work with is developing a full-scale military basis and a uh, prolonged food type deal. Solar panels, assuming that you've uh, solar panels or your or your power pl supplies, assuming that you've got enough plastic, uh, you can recycle silicon and other stuff like that for um, or plastic for windmills if you need to. But assuming that you have enough supplies for this, um, you can last your windmills or your other parts maybe say up to 20, maybe 30 years, assuming, doesn't, assuming nothing breaks. After that 20 to 30 year APOC, well actually no, uh, for that 20 to 30 year APOC, you're still going to need a food supply after the canned food has gone out. You need to start learning how to farm. That's why I would recommend at that point you start chopping down any trees in that area and start building little land plots. Gardening um, in backyards is a very good thing to train. Um, you know, city gardening for 40 to 50 people is very sufficient. More in the next video on how to, pro uh, on how to uh, slow down the, the crunch.